Hello, and welcome to the show. I'm Vila Bianca. I'm Eric Murphy. This is Skeptic Generation. And we need to talk. Well, <laughs> well, well, how are you doing today? I'm doing so well. It has been a just crazy week. We've been, well, why don't you tell them? Yeah, well, we've been, we've been busting our asses, you guys. We packed all of our button pins for our first 50 patrons for the first 100 promo shares we labeled them packed them they're all in a box we're ready to bring them off to a uh, post office and see how much the stamps cost so fingers crossed um <laughs> but that was it's it was it. it was so much fun to be able to, to to do that for you guys and to give something back we still have so many buttons so we're just gonna save them for like faithless forum or something Ooh. give out a bunch of them or something like that yeah, i mean we, we don't have them for sale and i don't think we're going to order another bet bunch so that's going to be limited that's, limited that's edition it. first round of sg buttons yeah 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 who knows we also got uh the ability to apply for monetization this yes week. we did oh my gosh it's been this is episode three this is episode three we've had the channel <laughs> for 20 days and we're already able to be monetized now the way it works is you have to apply and they have to review and that can take a little bit of time so we're not monetized yet but we are able to apply for it and i just want to thank all of you guys because yes. we we were like, hey, guys, if you want to put us on in the background and just press mute and go about your day, feel free to do that. Help us out. Get us a couple extra hours. And you guys delivered. I want to give a shout out to Amy. Amy on Facebook um, watched the show 13 times and can memorize it now. And wow. I am so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Amy. Um yeah, but uh, we've got a we've got a couple of announcements to get through before we get to calls. We've got some awesome people already on the line. Mm -hmm. um, while we announce, decide if you want to give us a call at 585-526-8774 or tiny.cc slash call SG. All right, we have merch. We need to be plugging that. There it is. Um, yeah, if you want some free merch, there's still a way to do that, but only through June. So we have a new flyer up on our website. Yes, yep, we do. Sorry we about do. that. <laughs> <laughs> we do indeed. We have a new flyer. Um, so be sure to go there, print that out, and post it up around town. And if you uh, give us a picture of it at our, at our Twitter address, at Skeptic Show with the hashtag SG Flyer, you're going to get a free shirt signed by us, if you like, delivered to you. And a shout out on the show. This week, our uh, winner is at Doggy Mom. Look at that That's gorgeous so shot. That is such a gorgeous shot. I, I, I am so in love with that, that picture. <laughs> oh my gosh. Great job, Doggy Mom. We will be in touch over DMs on Twitter to get your contact information and your shirt size. Yes. But again... This is only through June. Once June is over, we're going to be moving on, doing other things, setting up a new studio. More on that next week. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of June, happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride, you guys. We're a little late, but it is the first episode in June, so it still counts. And before we jump into calls, because mm -hmm. forgive me, I love a soapbox, I have a little something to share with y'all. Um, so... Uh, I'm queer, in case you didn't know. In, in case this is me coming out. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is this is news to everybody, I'm sure. Um, but there's been some discourse around uh, pride, especially the pride parade, especially things like kink at pride and what is acceptable and what is not and what it should be and what it used to be and what it is and all of this conversation. And one thing that I'm seeing lacking in this conversation is actually a, a grasp of where where pride came from, what it is, and what it always kind of has been. And I'm not making the case that this is the end-all be-all to the conversation, but it is worthwhile to bring up and to yeah. understand. So just for y'all's edification, uh, back in the 60s, if you were out and proud, if you were gay or trans in any way, shape, or form publicly, you risked um, losing your job you risked being committed to a mental institution. You risked being arrested and beat up by the cops um, uh, across the board for anything um, uh, because you were allegedly um, violating yeah. indecency laws, essentially. 
um, which were laws that told you how to dress and how to act in public. And there were quite a few clashes with the cops around this, but the most prominent one that we remember today is the one at Stonewall. And the reason, (laughs) funny story, the reason that uh, queer people could go to Stonewall to uh, just get drinks and dance. It was essentially just like a hangout, a bar, a club Ooh, for I, I like this one. Yeah. for queer people. The reason that they could go to Stonewall and get away with it a lot of the time is because Stonewall, the inn, was actually run by the mob. <laughs> And the cops, the cops and the mob just, didn't mess just with were it. like they were like, no, nope, you do you, we'll do us. Yeah, like there was an unspoken we'll just... agreement, and the mob didn't care. <laughs> the mafia was like, okay, like if you want to yeah, come in and, and your do money this. spends just the same. Exactly. So they were able to go to Stonewall for quite a long time and get away with it. Um, but one day the cops did end up showing up. They started arresting people left and right, and they fought back. Um, the queer patrons and the queer neighbors in that area got news that this was happening, and they fought back. Apparently, a bunch of kids, um, young men, uh, mm-hmm. joined linked arms in front of the paddy wagon and did, like, high kicks to keep him <laughs> from going anywhere. Um, and the first person to uh, throw a brick or start, start it becoming a riot, which it did, uh, is historically accredited to either Martha P. Johnson, Marsha mm-hmm. P. Johnson, who is a black trans activist, or Sylvia Rivera, who was a Puerto Rican and Venezuelan trans activist. So if you take nothing else from this, uh, trans people of color are the MVPs this month and every month, but they're kind of the the grandparents of Pride, and I thought that was super cool. Anyway, Pride has always been a protest. (laughs) It's always been based on a riot that was specifically targeting uh, unfair indecency laws that allowed queer people's way of dress and way of uh, action to be policed by the public. Um, so take with that, <laughs> take that as you will. Inform those Twitter conversations. Inform those conversations and, you know, <laughs> hold the positions you want to hold, sure, you know, but at least be aware of the history there and be aware of the, the talking points that you are bringing to the table. If you want to argue about this or about anything else, uh, give us a call at 585-526-8774. Or 585-LEMURF. Or if you want to call online, uh, not using your phone number or whatever, not using your minutes. Do do people pay for minutes anymore? I'm sure there's some people who do. I did up through undergrad. God. That was a long time ago. It's a long time ago. I had a little brick (laughs) brick phone. Um, But uh, you can go to tiny.cc slash call sg correct that is correct I, so and th- before we dive into calls yeah. there is one other thing because people i think were a little bit confused i know we hadn't actually outright talked about the dynamic of how we're doing this oh yeah that's right that's a good point let's, yeah let's dive into that real quick so the the person in this chair is hosting v and i are switching off hosting and that may not seem like a huge difference to you who are watching but here's where the difference is uh v the, or the person who's hosting is going to be uh you know in charge of of deciding which calls we take and is going to be leading the conversation keeping y'all captivated and entertained in the meantime um we still have to produce this thing we don't have a producer and it's a lot to make that happen and so uh the person in this chair is actively producing the show uh doing all of the scene changes um making sure that things are going up okay um earlier on in this episode apparently my mic wasn't on oh and so while you were talking i was actually adjusting and trying to get my mic to work (laughs) glad i had a vamp i'm so glad yeah it was rough uh and i might be coming in too hot now but we'll find out um either way uh just be patient with us uh because we're working really really hard to make this happen and this is how we're doing it so i'm gonna be at the controls v's gonna be guiding and who are we going to talk to first? Um, I think we should prioritize somebody who has to get somewhere later today to host another show. Um, Kenneth Leonard. Kenneth, welcome to Skeptic Generation. Kenneth, can you hear us? Kenneth. Hello, Kenneth. Going once. And Kenneth is gone. Oh, no. We're going to pop him back on... Uh back on hold there yeah um let's talk with puck puck called in last week uh, a little too late and we didn't get to him on time so let's jump in today puck hello hey what's going on how can we help you today 
Can Puck hear us? Hello. Hello. Oh, I bet you they can't hear us. Oh, I bet you anything that is the case. Wait. Well. One second. The callers and call screeners can't hear us anymore. All right. Well, Did we, we hang up by accident or something? No, no. We're still in the thing. Uh, this just means that you get to vamp a little bit more about pride oh, while God. I Hello. do this. Uh, so Puck <laughs> is going to go back One to the queue. Minute. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do our best to make this work. In the meantime, All uh, right. look at V. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. I didn't wear makeup today, so you can see me flushing. Um, so yeah, uh, something to to talk about. I might I might get dressed up for Pride uh, one of these episodes. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I might get all decked out. I have a couple of things that would be fun to wear. Um, there are a couple of really amazing people online who have been going over this conversation around kink at Pride and around you know the respectability of Pride and of queer people and how mainstream it kind of has become in a way, um, but and how that's kind of harmful to the overall concept. So one person to check out for sure is Jesse Gender. They just did a live stream, uh, I believe the other day, on the subject, and uh, by, all, by all accounts, I have not yet watched it myself, Jesse, I will get to it, but uh, that's a really, really good place to start. Uh, they have some really, really good thoughts on that. Another person to check out is Jamie Dodger. Um, Jamie Dodger is a trans man from the UK who does talk a lot about this kind of thing, especially the idea of corporatization around pride and, and how it can be a little bit difficult to uh, navigate that balance between being accepted in the mainstream and also pushing aside people who might make us uncomfortable or might, you know, tarnish that respectable image yeah. by being themselves. Uh, Puck, can you hear us yet? No, he cannot. Okay, well, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is very strange. Yeah, well, let's um, let's pop him into the queue and maybe talk a little bit about. Are this you sure there's here. nothing in the X air that we need to adjust? I'm checking it right now. This All is right. fun. On air issues. Hello. Hey, can you hear us? Testing one two. Can you hear us? Hello, hello. Puck. Well. Oh my goodness. This is a thing. This is a thing. Someone can hear uh, Mark, who I believe is on the line, says I can hear someone say hello and someone typing, but they can't hear me. So we are not able to hear them now, but apparently they can hear us. Ah, Puck, can you hear us? I'm going to try popping him back in the queue and just seeing if it's just a puck issue. It might not be a puck issue, but... Let's take Mark. Let's see if Mark can hear us. All right. Mark, you're live with Eric and Hello. Me. Oh, hey. I heard a beep. Oh, Hi. good. Hi, can you hear us? Hello. V? V, you're right there. Hello. Mark. I'm, I'm right there. I heard a beep. Yes, okay, so you heard me. No, he heard a beep. Oh. Well, I thought then. he said he heard V, not a beep. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> let's talk about uh, let's talk about one of the subjects. Well, while we work it out. Um, okay. Um. So one of the subjects, I guess I'm not we can. Hearing you through my phone. Yeah. Very very long lag. Well, yeah. That that's generally. Yeah, that's that that should be the case, uh, but we're just gonna keep figuring this out because we do not quit. Uh, we're going to make this happen. Can you hear us now? I'll take that as a no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh, my God. Is, well, the, one, the one thing we forgot to test before this episode that we test before every episode is the one thing that goes wrong. Well, that's why we test it. Yeah. Um, okay, well, at least the the the... the people watching the show can hear us. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to talk a little bit about the new studio. Yes. I'm not hearing you through my phone. I am hearing you through... Um, this is good. Mark, uh, stay on and tell us when you can hear us. Uh, you are going to be our litmus test. In the meantime, <laughs> we're going to talk about the new studio. <laughs> so... Um, I, I'm panicking. This is... <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the point of vamping is to pretend like we're not panicking. Oh, okay. Shh. <laughs> Um, so one of the things um, that we are super excited about is actually tomorrow we are going to pick up keys to a new house that we are going to be renting. And the reason we chose this particular house is because we have a massive master bedroom yes that we are going to be turning into our new studio so next week will actually be the last week that we have this studio set up and we are in this tiny little room with not enough room for all of the lights and you know no ventilation no yeah it gets really there will be a beautiful new studio with lots of windows lots of room and lots of air um, and it's going to allow us to do things that are new and different. So for right now and for, you know, maybe the next couple of months as we gather enough um, funds to be able to build a set, it's going to look very similar to this. Mm -hmm. But as we grow, we're going to be able to expand and build out. And that set is going to be absolutely beautiful. We're going to be getting... Um, we're so excited. If you are a patron, you've already seen the behind the scenes with Eric video about our lav mics that we're going to be using uh, we're going to be able to walk around we're going to be able to interact with each other you're going to get to see our legs um <laughs> in some not not <laughs> clothed legs uh pants legs yes the pants. only downside to this eric i've realized is that now we can't do the show in our underwear anymore oh no that's that's a problem um well, i guess we could technically i found the issue you did i did so it turns out that between this week and last week, Google Voice has decided that we didn't give them permission to use the microphone. Oh. So now I'm going to Google how to fix that. Okay. All right. So we, um, we have the <laughs> issue. Now we just need to ask Google why that's the case. Um, we've got some really exciting callers. I'm so excited. Charismatic Catholic is calling in from Texas, and we're going to be getting to him soon. Cindy Plaza says, you guys have legs. What? Legs exist? Believe it or not, <laughs> that is the case. Um, let's see. Any other fun things in the chat here? Let's, uh, let's turn this into a really brief AMA <laughs> while we're waiting on this to get fixed. I think that's a wonderful idea. All right, you I'm guys. I'm going to need to, I think I'm going to need to recall into call-in studio. Oh, God, that's going to drop everybody. That's going to drop everybody. So everybody who can hear us, get ready to call back because this is going to be a nightmare. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, so Five, we two, six, eight, seven, seven, four, or tiny.cc slash call SG. SG. There, I've put the information in the chat. So while you're busy calling back, because we do want to talk to all of you, um, ask us anything. Ask us anything. We will, <laughs> we will answer your questions. Yes. Uh, I, you know Inez what? says, the, oh, Lord, help us. Well, the, there had to be one like this, you know? I mean, I mean it was going to happen eventually. The first one was like this. Uh, you're right, except we weren't on the air, right? Only one. No, well, that was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh, Tomb Rolls and Drumbeats says. I did. Go ahead. That was an invalid number. Please re-enter your show or meeting. That's weird. Yeah, and go on, go ahead. Okay. Um, so Tomb Pearls and Drumbeat says, When did you two crazy kids get together? We got together unofficially almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, August or September of twenty nineteen, and then we made it official in December, I believe. Uh, so in December, it'll be two years. Yeah. I mean, th the thing is, things progressed very, very slowly and um, very innocently for a very long time. And yeah, so we were was... cuddle buddies first. We were just like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? We're sharing a lot about ourselves. Okay. We need to, well, we need to reward them for sticking around with us in some way. All right. So, um, yeah, we were cuddle buddies at first. And then eventually we ended up being more than that. Um, yeah. So that was it was back in the summer of 2019. You are now in the host room and can manage your callers. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, we are back in. Let's see. Let's Who? take somebody. I think if we go up. 
We've got Malachi in the host queue. Malachi, can you hear us? Please, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Oh, oh. God. Okay. Oh. Okay, we're back in. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. Oh, no. All right. Oh, Malachi. that was panic. That was, um, you guys are awesome. You guys are the chillest people, I think, on the face of the planet. <laughs> Thank y'all. All right, Malachi, what can Ooh. we talk with you about today? I was going to say, you've got some material for uh, bloopers reel. Oh, <laughs> the entire show is just going to be a bloopers reel. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that, that that is going to be the bloopers reel clip. Um, I, I don't want to shy away from it when we clip this. I'm going to take that entire thing and publish it out. Oh, yeah. No, this entire thing is going up. But uh, I was just uh, calling in, you know, as I've deconverted from religion, I'm an atheist, and um, I start to look at other things other than religion, um, you know, instead of as opposed to just kind of like aligning with certain political views, I try to look at all things from a skeptical point of view and try to, you know, rationalize, like, is there, is there some kind of moral issue here that, um, that I should like be for or against something? And one of those things is kind of like a topic that a lot of people can be, you know, can be really controversial and that's, um, gun, you know, gun laws and gun rights. And, and my, my default position for everything is that, is that I, Initially, I'll never really support taking away rights from anyone for mm -hmm. any reason. Um, and for anything, we should be we should have more rights, you know. Um, and and we're always fighting for those sorts of things. So, so initially, I kind of um, kind of shy away from um, you know being negative towards it. But my but I'm always but then I'm kind of thinking, well, is there a reason that, that is there good evidence? Like, is there a reason that I should be against it? Um, and, and I kind of go through a thought process of like, you know, it's an inanimate object, it's amoral, um, you know, immoral or moral actions are committed by people and not things. And so I just kind of wanted to like bring that up, uh, kind of like as just as skeptics, you know, how do we go through life and, and try to evaluate these sorts of things from a skeptical point of view and how do we know if we're right or wrong? and. That is actually, I love the fact that you called in about this because this is exactly kind of where I would love this show to ultimately go is, yeah, let's talk about how skepticism applies to gun ownership. That's a really interesting topic um, and hopefully one that people will be weighing in on in the comments in the live chat. Uh, for me personally, Malachi, um, I don't think that gun ownership is an immoral thing. I think that a tool cannot necessarily be moral or immoral. I think it's mostly about how you use that tool. So if you have a farm, for example, and you need to protect your 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 herds or your, your flocks or whatever, absolutely understandable that you would have a gun. If you just like playing with it and you're safe and you go to a gun range and you take all the precautions and you, you get training and, and you have fun with it, that's also fine as far as I'm concerned, but it's the irresponsibility of the kind of gun laws that frankly are being passed in Texas right now where they're actually even abolishing the need to have a license at all. So you can now conceal mm -hmm. carry an unlicensed firearm anywhere you would like in Texas, which is scary right. to say it's the terrifying least. terrifying because people have, I mean, somebody tried to, wanted to fight me actually. I was at the doctor's office a few oh, weeks yeah. ago and somebody um, was, had, you know, had the chin strap and this was before um, the mask restrictions were lifted. And I was at the doctor's and I was like, okay, I need to feel safe at my own doctor's office. And so I, was, I, I told him, hey, could you please pull up your mask? And he tried to get me to go outside to fight him. Yep. Um, you know, oh. if that guy could carry a gun, I'm sure he would have. And as angry as he got, that that could have wound up really, really bad. Um, I, I've got a couple of other opinions, but I yep. wanted you to... Um, the only other thing I would say there is that there is also this element of, you know, we, we have to acknowledge how some people are encouraged to have guns and other people are discouraged from having guns. In fact, it can be lethal for them to even carry facsimiles or toys that look like guns, right? The, a lot of the, the mm -hmm. police shootings that happen of black people, especially black men, are, oh, well, he had a gun. Well, there's that disparity, right? There's that cognitive dissonance that we as skeptics right. need to pay attention to, which is, okay, well, then which one is it? If we're going to be consistent and skeptical in this, then we either have to say, yes, everybody gets a gun and can use it whenever they want, which frankly is a bad idea. Or 
we need to regulate it and treat people who are just carrying guns around with maybe a degree of concern. But when that concern is only levied at a specific group, it becomes less skeptical and more of a form of policing, frankly. Um, what I, are your thoughts, Eric? I agree. Well, I, I, I think defending yourself uh, is a right. I don't think ownership of a specific kind of weapon is a right. Uh, people treat guns as a fundamental right. And I think that they're conflating the weapon type with the concept of self-defense. Um, I think that, yeah, uh, in, in your examples of, you know, people in the wilderness, people in the, in the wilderness, if you're hunting, if you're doing this and that. Uh, but personally, um, I think that if you were to uh, take the word gun out and, re and replace it with any other hobby, um, it would be banned because uh, there are more suicide deaths than there are murders with gun ownership. Uh, and people don't talk about that. The fact is, um, there people will try, and a lot of them are more, I, I hate using the word, but it's more successful at committing suicide when they have a gun. Yeah, it's concentrated firepower. It's it is. and Concentrated violence. And um, myself, I was a gun owner, and I realized that um, due to my mental health, I needed to sell it, and I do not keep them. And I will not allow it'll allow them simply because it is for my mental health. So I'm not going to sit and, and tell other people, but I, I, f I do feel like we need to have a serious conversation about what activities you know <laughs> we want to have because the rates are horrendous. Um, right, and there's yeah, also I agree with you on that. Yeah, and one more thing, and then I'll let you let you kind of weigh in, Malachi, as well, which is the yeah i like that you brought that up because a lot of the conversation around mass shootings that are picking up again now that people are leaving quarantine um is oh well it was a mentally unhealthy person who did it and that conversation can be so detrimental because of what you said the the, the mass majority of people who are mentally unwell who have some kind of mental illness and who interact with a gun in a negative way is not to go out and shoot other people, but rather to kill themselves. Most and, of the time. Yeah, so yeah. the fact that we only bring this up as a concern around, oh, well, what if this person gets a gun is when other people are going to be harmed as opposed to when that person could harm themselves. Yeah. Is, well, it's, it's, it's just a, a much larger conversation definitely needs to be had, and I apologize. We probably should have put a trigger warning before this one. We, we should know have. this is where this is going to go. But um, Malachi, oh, what are your thoughts yeah. here? Yeah. Uh, so I, I agree with, you know, everything that you guys are saying. And I, I think that's real, they're really good points. And, you know, at, at, and, and at the more nuanced uh, conversation to have about this is about, you know, regulations um, and not necessarily just, you know, rights is kind of like the beginning part of it, like you were talking about, Eric. And then I think regulations are kind of the next part of how we try to allow people to have that right, but yet make it safe for everyone and make sure that, um you know, it's it's uh, responsible. It's a responsible way of, of handling. You know, like for example, even though driving is not a um, owning a car, or driving is not a right. You still have to take a driving test and prove that right. um, you are capable of operating it in a safe manner, and you have yeah. the knowledge of how to operate it. And um, you know, that doesn't really touch on like the whole mental health aspect. But I think the analogy kind of plays through where um, you know I. I personally have owned guns. I have a Republican family, like my parents are very Republican. And so it's, it was just kind of something I just fell into without really thinking about it. And so that's why I'm kind of going back now and trying to, you know, is this- You're deconstructing in other places in your life? Whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> like, does this fit in my worldview? Like, do I, do I, should I be doing this? And just, and I've, and I've kind of gone back and forth in a lot of places. And I, and I guess where I'm kind of falling is like, you know, we maybe we need more, um, you know, like I would be perfectly fine with going and taking like a mental health exam or evaluation to show that I'm like in a, that I'm in a state that's. Well, and um, also, and also your gun you know, example is a great one just to add to that. Um, uh, or or your, your driving example is a great example uh, for that. You don't just get your license and you can drive forever. You have to re-up it. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, anyway. it, and it seems, you know, unless, you know, it, like a gun is a constant, concentrated violence. And so I do agree that if you are in, incapable of, of managing yourself um, or if you, if you have, you know, if you are having trouble make, um, 
Uh, if you're having like a mental issue where you can't really rely on your own decision making 100% of the time to be correct, then having concentrated violence accessible may not be the safest thing for no, you or anybody the people else. around you. Right. Exactly. Um, and so I agree with that. And, and I, um, but so I think there's definitely, you know, more regulation because you, you potentially could do more damage with firearms than you could with, I don't know, maybe that's debatable, but, but you, Malachi, you could do damage with other things. And, yeah, you know, but, um, I, I, I think we've plumbed the depths on this though, uh, just because it's a call in show. Um, I th oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But like, I appreciate this is, taking the call, though. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing such an interesting topic to the table. I'm excited to talk more about this kind of thing and how, you know, looking at one area of your life as a skeptic necessitates looking at other areas as well. And that's that's how you maintain your skepticism. So great job, Malachi. Yeah, sorry if you're looking for like a, a heated argument. No, no not worries. at all. We have, a, we, have, bring that today. we have plenty of we'll them in the queue. So. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, uh, good, I love the show, guys. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Take it easy. Bye. All right. All right. Who are we talking to next? Well, we were trying to talk to Puck before, and I believe that he is back on the line. So <laughs> let's try talking with Puck. Puck, can you hear us now? Puck is on the line. Yay! Puck is on the line. Look at that. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to talk about? Okay, um, so I, I was um, hosting a, co hosting a show uh, that some of our viewers may have heard of called uh, Truth Wanted, mm -hmm. um, and it has come to my attention that philosophy is a very weak spot of mine, and I suppose I should start figuring out why it's important to learn philosophy, especially with regards to discussing atheism. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Good question. Ooh, oh, do, do you want to go first? Um. I'm curious what you're going to say, because I think we may actually have different takes on this one. Sure. So uh, practically, the way that I lived my life and the way that I approached this is I got interested in the subject and then um, was quickly challenged and, and found that, you know, well, why do you believe this? Why is it important? And so it was through the lens of skepticism that I started to explore philosophy. And um, it, it's really, really useful when people want to give reasoning because, dude, in our society, there are so many things that are socially, oh yeah, okay. You know, somebody says, oh, I can see your aura and it's purple. And you, and, and you don't want to be rude, so you just go, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, you don't believe them, but you're not going to be a jerk about it, you know. Or they say, oh, you know, I went to, uh, to, to, to get acupuncture and, um, you know, my cancer is cured. And everybody goes, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> um, but it's, it's truly terrible. And, and when you dive into philosophy and, and you start kind of deconstructing a lot of informal fallacies is where most people start. And so you get things like poisoning the well. And poisoning the well is, um, is a kind of straw man argument. It's, it's, um, it's breaking down people's confidence in a person, not based on the subject, but based on the characteristics of that person. So, um, you know, you shouldn't listen to V because V microwaves pizza. Uh, so I do be. not. You are the one who microwaves pizza, <laughs> so, you liar. And so you do not smear it has, like that. It has nothing to do with the subject, but just trying to get people against the person. And, I and, put you in a close-up. <laughs> I reached across the desk to make sure you, you got your I time know, in the I sun know, and you know, give me microwaved <laughs> pizza. Um, but but breaking it down from there, you know, the ad baculum argument is the one a whole lot of people know. Don't do it, or I'm going to hit you. You know, the argument from the stick, and then you start going into the formal fallacies, and those are really really interesting. You know, when you when you get into that, somebody could be wrong, even though they make perfect sense because the structure makes it impossible for that to for for one thing to necessarily follow the other, and so it just. It just leads to you having all of this in your arsenal so that you're not only able to talk about this at a deeper level, but have a deeper understanding of things and, you know, maybe challenge what you believe on more levels because it may not be until later that you find out you were wrong. I, I had a philosophy professor um, who actually had a really, really bad take on a thing. And I asked him in class, could you please graph that? That was not a fun day. 
um, for the uh, it was because you graph it and it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> and so just getting to do that is just it's it's fun. What do you think, V? Yeah, I'm curious what uh, what Puck has to say about that first. Uh, you're right, and then you know studying the logical, uh, the formal and informal fallacies is is good for knowing where there's uh, flaws in argumentation. I suppose it's more. To me, I, I think of it the same way that math and music are very related, where you can get a very deep appreciation for music if you know a lot of the math behind it, but you don't really need to. And even if you can't say why pitches uh, have, are mathematically related to each other or uh, anything else, that um, any other ways that math is related to music, you can still have a very good appreciation for music, including being able to critique music. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So it, it seems like a lot of people, especially people who believe in philosophy and the conversations I have, they try to bring it every conversation to this is a discussion about philosophy. Just like people like me will say everything has to do with math. I, and sure, if you break it down, everything has some basis in math, but well, I, I, there's I, so much more to it. Puck, here's, here, yeah. here's, here's the great thing that I discovered. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Math is derived from philosophy. Yeah. So when we say everything goes back down to math, you can take it one more spot and it goes down to philosophy. Um, if you look at where a lot of the mathematical symbols come from, um, they share the exact same roots in philosophy of something is greater than, less than, added to, subtracted from, equals. Um, and you, you just go down the line. There are a whole bunch of really, really fun symbols that nobody ever sees. Um, that, I believe, wasn't the equal sign created to express A is A I, as opposed to... I'm, and not, then, I'm not sure about that one particularly, but if you, you, you're... Yeah, you're I'm, I'm reading this book, The God Problem. Um, and it's really well written and I highly recommend it, especially to people who like math because it's very math based and it's, he, he, he writes it in such a way that it is interesting to me, a, a non-mathematical person. Um, but one of the, one of the things that he points out, especially is that they are connected so intensely that math was made possible by, uh, the creation of the the axiom a is a mm -hmm. and the first time that somebody created that equal sign it was to express that philosophical concept before it was then used that in was amazing math. so yeah and and i mean it, it makes sense you know a lot of people will think well hold on a second math has this ability to to abstract and you're able to prove a thing true kind of in a bubble even if it's not true in the real world you know um or no, I'm sorry, I'm flipping that around. Most people think that math leads to absolute truth. There we go. And philo in philosophy, <laughs> <laughs> in philosophy, you can do the you it, you can you know do something in a bubble. But the same is true for math, right? We can add fictitious apples into a into a barrel and find out how many apples there are without actually having apples. You know, we can we can mathematically you know talk about how tall. Um, you know, the, the highest hill in the Shire is above sea level without actually going to the Shire. And in the same way, you know, math has that as well. It's context dependent. What I loved is that there are, you can, you know, I, I feel like if we were to get a time machine and get all the great philosophers in a room and, and say, you know, are you philosophers? Yes. Do you know philosophy? Do you, do, do, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and mathematicians at the same time, you know, are, can, can with amazing certainty be able to get us, you know, to, to the moon. It can get us into space. It can get us technology and all of that, but it's within context. And without the context, you ask somebody, you know, uh, what, you know, what does the thing add up to and undefined. See, but here's where I'm going to jump in and express, Puck, why I think philosophy specifically and understanding these is important if you are trying to come up against certain apologetics and apologists. Now, if you want to be a good atheist, a good skeptic, you don't really need to know a lot of philosophy, right? You can you can get a, uh, a grasp of the informal fallacies, maybe a couple of the, the formal ones, and you're pretty much good to go. This isn't like a you need to know philosophy or else you are not a good skeptic kind of conversation at all. But exactly in the way that Eric just got super excited talking about math and philosophy, 
there are professors press i think is his name um who uses math and its connection to philosophy to try and prove god and it's very convincing to a lot of people because they don't know the philosophy or the math in a lot of cases uh, to be able to critique that so it's essentially bringing a, a knife to a knife fight right where you're like okay philosophy for a lot of these apologists is the weapon of choice that they use they use it badly but for somebody who doesn't know better like it looks fine it's like a bad choreographed fight scene in a movie where like people who don't do it for a living probably aren't going to notice that it's you know looks fake and staged but if you you know sword fight for a living or if you uh do jujitsu or something you're going to be able to tell right away that they're faking it so if that's your goal that's when philosophy becomes useful but it absolutely is not a requirement across the board to be a skeptic or an atheist okay I appreciate you guys thinking that, and it's so interesting hearing how excited both of you get about talking about this. <laughs> and and I, 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 I wish that there was there's more time, and it, it was the appropriate time for, for, for beers to be shared around the table so that this kind of conversation could go on for longer. Hey, uh, next time you're in Austin, man. Damn straight. <laughs> um, in the meantime, take care. I, I, I keep doing that. You, you do. <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you so much for calling in, Puck. Thanks for the conversation. Thanks for your time. Have a good day. You too. Bye. All right. Oh, let's talk um, to Dave. Okay. Let's talk with Dave. Dave has an interesting story for us. Dave, welcome to the show. How can we help you today? Hey, guys. Am I on? Yes. You are. Well... I, yeah, I was going to tell you, I used to be a skeptic, but then I saw, I was having a pancake yesterday, and I saw Jesus' face in it, mm -hmm. and so now I'm a believer. Uh-huh. Um, so, I don't believe you. <laughs> what, what do you say about that? How do you, how do you argue with that? I don't believe you, uh -huh. Dave. <laughs> But I saw his face in a pancake. Yeah, Dave. I here, here's the thing. Um, we, we you got two options, buddy. Uh, one is we need to you know really dive down and figure out whether or not you're real. Or two, if you're an atheist. I'm real. I'm right here talking to you from Kansas State. Well, from Charlotte, North Carolina now, where I live with my girlfriend Bevan. Hi, Dave. It's nice to have you on the show. <laughs> Hey, oh, right. Dave! <laughs> oh, God damn it. I knew it. Uh, everybody. Uh, <laughs> you might want to update that. <laughs> Dave, uh, it is lovely hearing from you. I figured. Oh, guys, I figured. <laughs> I love you guys. I just wanted to call in and support the show and tell you hi. And so I thought, I would, I thought I'd get through quicker if I posed as a crazy Christian seeing Jesus in a pancake. <laughs> No, we don't want to encourage people to do that. Well, well, <laughs> you you got us. You got us intrigued. Um, how are you doing, man? Anyway, anyway, guys, I won't take a lot of time because I know you got actual serious callers. <laughs> and but I, you know, I was going to call in on the inaugural show, and we were traveling. We were in Dallas that day, actually, and um, I don't know. I, quit, I think we had some glitches, and I couldn't get on. So. Yeah, there were a anyway, couple glitches uh, on our end. Yeah. I, yeah. But. You guys are awesome. I love you. I love seeing the new show. And man, you guys are kicking ass already. Oh, thank you. We're trying. We're trying. For people who haven't followed all of our old stuff, um, they don't know who you are. Yeah, Dave, pitch your stuff. Let everybody know who you are. Well, I've, I've been on Eric. And Eric, you know, so far, you know, the talk to and we did a couple of those with, with you. And um, one of my favorite times on that was that um that caller he was a very nice guy and we we agreed to disagree and and um and he uh, i think he said something like that that we can disagree and i said yeah i disagree with lots of people who are wrong <laughs> and your eyes when you <laughs> yeah <laughs> man <laughs> <sighs> so oh, that's no, beautiful uh, I've, I've got a thing called dying out loud and uh, a lot of your li listeners may may uh know that or not but anyway I've, I've i've gotten to know you guys and i do a lot in fact i'm starting my own show in a few weeks i hope so i'm a little 
I'm a little nervous because if you guys, the pros that you are, have these technical glitches, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a mess for me because I have no idea what I'm doing. The 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 <laughs> the best way is hang a lantern on it. If something happens, don't pretend it doesn't exist. But you know, if you That's call attention you know, to it, just be real. That's yeah. what I love about you guys. You guys are just real and just chatting and not not freaking. It's just. You know, it's, we're just all people doing the best we can. So, Absolutely. Um, well, Dave, when you do get your new show up and running, give us the links and we will plug that. We will make sure that people go find you. In the meantime, uh, w when we clip this call, uh, I'm going to make sure that there's a card linking to you where people can find you. Um, and there's also definitely going to be a picture of Jesus on a pancake on the thumbnail, just so you're aware. Ah! You can get my face on my merch in my merch room. You can get my face on a shower curtain, which today <laughs> two people have ordered. So there's that. Well, two different people are showering with Dave Warnock. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. Good times. Love you, Dave. Good That's times, uncomfortable. Man. Love you. Guys. Love Love you. you Thanks work. for calling in. <laughs> Damn it. I I wanted to see I right like right away right away the voice I was yeah. so I was so surprised you didn't catch it right away and you and you just let me it's just, just like, go hmm. fine fine <laughs> all right who's next oh I want to talk to Andy oh. because we know Andy Andy was on other shows and I think we have a pretty good relationship with this with this person Andy welcome to the show. Hey guys, uh, hey. how's it going? It's going well. How are you, Andy? Uh, doing good, doing good. Andy, uh, calling, can, you know, congratulate hey. you guys on the the new show. Thank you. Just Andy should be fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we're we're super excited, and we're super excited to have callers who are kind of already repeat callers because we know them already, and we we've we've established a little bit of a rapport. So, Andy, I'm super curious. Um, what do you have to talk with us about today? Um, so it's kind of touching on a topic that you guys uh, had a conversation about last week with a, an individual named. Justin, I think his name might have been. Yes. Um, um, obviously, the, the topic is veganism, and I just kind of wanted to come in with, um, I guess, a Christian perspective on this, because it seemed like um, a point that Eric brought up um, when I was, like, listening to that conversation is that um, maybe not all the way, but in some sense, there seems to be this, like... Um, uh, holdover in programming, I would say, from like you know, like days as a Christian. That um, and, and Eric, correct me if I'm if I'm just completely misunderstanding this, but there was like a, a like a sort of holdover in programming in the sense that when you were a Christian, you know, you were told that you know we're given stewardship by God over mm -hmm. the land and over the animals. Yeah, um, that's that's, uh, that's, that's right, right there in Genesis. Still, that's something you're still kind of trying to, I guess, part with. Yeah. Well, so the thing is, I, um, I, I'm not necessarily against, you know, the conclusion. I'm against the reasoning that gets you there. And so, um, there, while I have, you know, I've been working through this and working through this, um, there is still, I feel some influence in there that I still need to work through and I'm trying, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, that, that, that when, when you get hardwired from a young age into that, um, that it kind of sticks with you. Sure. Yeah, I I completely understand. You know, you know, Andy. You know, I I. What's okay? Really, really quick. You, you know what's funny? Um, you're on the other side of things, right? You're a Christian. Yes. Yes. Okay, and we're atheists, and we're discussing this in a civil way. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So <laughs> you're in Texas, right? I I am. Yeah. I bet you a beer that if we go into the comments under the video for this clip. People will not be as civil as you and I. Are you up for taking that that bet? <laughs> um, I, I tell you what. I, I tell you what. I I think I, I would have to turn down that. Bet. <laughs> yeah. it's, Can't be seen fraternizing with the enemy. We're trying so hard to model, you know, just I'm, discussion and. <laughs> but I'm anyway. curious. I'm curious, Andy. As a Christian, as a as a Catholic, I believe. How do you 
How do you think about the concept of veganism? Is there is there room in your in your theology for it, or is there a is there a counter uh, theologically that you've got to it? Yeah, I, I think that I think it needs to be stated first off that that Christianity does not mandate you know eating meat. Um, this isn't something that you know for all Christians out there. You know, it's not it's not something that our religion mandates, right? And I think that we actually have a response, as, because I would agree with Eric that, um, you know, I've been told this too, that, you know, in the eyes of God, um, we do as humans have a, um, you know, a special place. We are given, we are entrusted with this responsibility of being stewards over the land and over the animals. Mm -hmm. But for me, I just don't see how, um, well, there's really two, two paths here. The, the first would be, I don't see how it follows from being given stewardship over the land and animals that therefore it becomes okay to en masse breed them into existence for the sole purpose of killing them and chopping them up for their bo their body parts. Well, right? there's like, a, I just don't see how that, how that follows. There is a really interesting um, exercise that I did back in undergrad. I went to a Christian school and I had an entire class an entire semester's worth of class around this topic, around stewardship versus mastery of creation. And my professor at the time asked all of, this, all of the, the students in the class to line up uh, across the room. On one hand, we were gardeners, we were stewards, we were to protect and not master or, you know, submit, like bring the world into submission. And on the other end of the, of the room, it was, hey, you are the masters of this this universe or this this earth. You can do whatever you want to it. God has given you the permission to do that. And he was like, all right, go line up. Where where are you? And I was closer at the time to stewardship and you know the gardener concept. But everybody in that class was spread out across the room, right? And it was a spectrum. But there were definitely people who interpret that verse and and that ordinance to go forth and multiply to mean go make everything else subservient so i do see where you're coming from and i think that if if we were to talk about just the the global impact of that particular theology i would agree with you more than the other um but there really are quite a few christians who interpret that very much to mean we can do exactly what we want with everything else on the earth yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, when I have these conversations, because I do have these conversations with my, you know, fellow Christians a lot, um, and it it can be kind of, uh, you know, it's a lot of like diving into the, you know, into the scriptures and kind of trying to, you know, you know, parse out what what we're reading here. You know, a lot of times we'll go to the Book of Genesis. You know, like when um, so after the flood, God God tells Noah to, you know, that the the creatures on the earth will be for him and his family and it, it i i definitely understand i just think it's um it, it for me because there is no mandate from christianity coupled with the fact that um it, i guess it's coupled with the fact that uh we have no uh i guess uh, no good reason to be doing these things so, that uh, we're doing to animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, I, I don't see how the other side comes to it. So Andy, um, can I ask you a related question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just while we're talking about God and veganism? Yeah. Um, do you view God as moral and maybe, you know, the things God wants as moral? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, while you were talking to V, I pulled out my own Bible. And I turned to Leviticus because I know that there are tons and tons of offerings if you go to Leviticus. Uh, let's see. Jeez, I, was, I, I started in Leviticus 2 and I moved through 4 and I, I think it keeps going. But um, different sacrifices to make at the altar. Um, and, mm -hmm. and these are animal sacrifices. Um, so mm -hmm. has God changed his mind about sacrificing animals? Like, um, well, or, 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 or actually specifically, let me ask you, because because that's not a good question. Can I rephrase that? Yeah, for sure. Okay. 
did God approve of animal sacrifice? Yes. Okay. Is what God approves of moral? Yes. Okay. Does that make animal sacrifice moral? Um, it made animal sacrifice as part of the old covenant, I would say, moral uh, for sure. Um, if we're talking about uh, in a modern context, it may. Um, but when we're talking about veganism and we're talking about factory farming. Um, so I, I, to I totally I understood. I, I, I actually, I totally, totally understood the whole factory farming thing, I think is, 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 a, is a related issue as well, but not the topic of this question in particular. The thing is, you, you, you said what I thought you were going to say, and I wasn't trying to make this a trap, but I was trying to highlight a, an issue that I've had in the past. And you said, that's not the case anymore. It's part of the old covenant. So for people who don't speak Christianese, uh, the idea is that uh, after, um, after the Exodus, uh, Moses uh, wrote down a whole bunch of laws, and you can see those laws in the book of Leviticus. And those Levitical laws are the ones that people point to, a lot of atheists point to and say, you know, you, sh you, you shouldn't sow different seeds in the same field, which has been used to propagate. I mean, it is my favorite scene in West Wing ever. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't uh, wear mixed fabrics. Um, you, know, you shouldn't eat shellfish and things like that. And so uh, fast forward to the New Testament, uh, the idea, uh, and, and, and by the way, when you do something wrong, you need to make a sacrifice and penance. And so um, in the New Testament, the idea is that Jesus' death on the cross is an ultimate sacrifice that gets rid of everything. And so you don't have to worry about any of it ever anymore. And so when people say that's the old covenant, that's what they're referring to. So I just want to make sure that people who are non-believers their whole lives are following this and going, what are they talking about? They're referring to pre-Christ um, exoneration of you know bad behavior, sins, uncleanliness. Those also ties into dispensationalism mm -hmm. and also could be argued to be kind of anti-semitic <laughs> it definitely but that's another topic that's for another, another day topic. andy are you saying that god changed his mind um no i i wouldn't say that he's changed his mind okay so is animal sacrifice still moral um is animal sacrifice still moral i would say that uh animal sacrifice can be moral um uh, in the sense that, um, in the sense that, if we're looking at a culture in our modern world, that um, if we're looking at a culture somewhere, you know, in our modern world, that for them, um, for them, part of their uh, part of their, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to how to. No phrase worries. I, I'm saying that for it wouldn't be moral. I don't see how it could be moral for someone like me or you. But I wouldn't make a blanket statement that it couldn't be moral in terms of. Um, okay, that's actually it really be moral in terms of somebody else. That's really really interesting. Andy, I, I, I think that'd be really fun to, you know, go over a couple of times because the next question after that, and I, I, I feel like I'm going to be loading things on. So really what I'm doing is giving you something that you can, you know, look at in the future is, mm -hmm. so it sounds like you're saying that morality is context dependent. Um, morality is, I would say that there is an ultimate uh, an ultimate objective morality, but that... Okay, so then the, um, the, the reasoning you gave earlier then doesn't really make sense because you sounded like you were giving a context wherein animal sacrifice is still moral. Well, I would say that someone's interpretation, it, it wouldn't be... Uh, I, would, I would say my inter or someone's interpretation of that objective morality, it may not be my place to, come, to go to them and say what you're doing is immoral, right? That's the ultimate, I think, the ultimate point I was trying to make. Understood. Hopefully, maybe, I, I, I would love to loose you from the guilt and shame of the how dare you make a judgment about a thing that you're not involved in. Because when you're talking about morality, especially when you come from a perspective where morality is something that is independent of context, 
I don't think you can hold those things in your head, in your, in, I don't think you can hold both of those views at the same time. I think they con they, they conflict with each other. Um, but I'd love for you to call back yeah. with, you know, uh, your take I, on it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I, I, I have, uh, I'll definitely be li listening over this call later, kind of, uh, <laughs> have some, some food for thought. I just, I want, uh, let me just say before, before I let you, or before you guys let me go, um, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is Pride Month this month, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that um, when we're, we're um, interacting with, say, members of the LGBT community, that um, as Catholics, we should be accepting uh, members of this community with love, compa or, sorry, with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Um, those are the words of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And, and it says this because... Um, I, I promise this is going to wrap up quick. It says this because <laughs> we know that in Jesus' lifetime, he was constantly reaching out to individuals on the margins, right? He was constantly doing this. And in, in my opinion, I don't, I would include animals. Within that group of marginalized indi individuals, I think we have to include animals in that and that they should be, they are deserving of our respect, compassion, and sensitivity as well. And that's just, you know, kind of the position I'm coming from. That was an interesting roundabout. That was. There's a lot to unpack. There, there was so you, much scenery. You need you the, need to call back so that we can please unpack that. call back. That is like Andy. twelve calls worth yes. of unpacking. That is really <laughs> it, <laughs> that is interesting <laughs> right, for guys. sure. All right, guys. All right, thank you for calling in, Andy. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. I was like, wow, uh, this sounds. Yeah, did I just get called an Andy? No, 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 no. Just in the no, same bracket. That's no, all. it's fine. <laughs> No, it's it, I, it, it's and like I don't necessarily disagree with a lot of what he said, but that was the that was a weird bracket to fall into. That was a weird Andy. transition. That was, um, that was I mean, but well, let, yeah. he tried though. He tried that transition, that being timely. Like kudos, I guess. Hats off to you know thinking about the theme of the episode and of yeah, the month. Absolutely, and 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 <laughs> truly, honestly, you know what we see in the history of religion is that religion changes with the people because that's what it is. Um, you know, it, and so seeing that change is really interesting. And, and it's not like, I mean, there are a lot of atheists that will try and steel man any Christian who says, well, you have to be homophobic if you are a Christian. And they wind up creating this straw man yeah. and then attacking it. And you're not doing any good and you're not doing anybody any favors by doing that because just because it may not make sense with a literal interpretation doesn't mean that every Christian takes a literal interpretation. And if you right. try and force them into that, uh, you're attacking a straw man and you have just walked right away from the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's also, yeah, I there was a conversation um, that I had on Twitter earlier in the week where some Christ, like online Twitter Christian apologist was like, it's so funny how atheists assume that fundamentalists are the correct version when actually fundamentalists are just trying to fit their worldview into the Bible. And I'm like, <gasps> I'm like, yeah, I know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're so close. They're I, so like, close. So close. I was like, there are no correct there is no correct Christianity. Every single version of Christianity that is around today would be indis it, it, like nobody from a hundred CE <laughs> would know what the fuck was going on. And every single version is people trying to fit their worldview into a book. And there could be versions that maximize harm, which are worse to me, or versions that minimize harm, which, hey, we could be allies in some things. Hooray, that's great. But there is no correct version of Christianity. There's just Christianity. And if you call it, that's the problem when you say anyone who, anyone can be a Christian, you get a whole bunch of people calling themselves Christian and that waters down that pool pretty quick. And um, for people who are playing um, Skepgen Bingo, which we have. We have a Skepgen uh, Bingo. Link in the, in the live chat. I know we, our mods are totally ready for that, which is amazing. <laughs> um, but uh, that leads to the No True Scotsman argument, which we can talk about more another day because we've got lots of calls and not a lot of time. But uh, who are we talking to next? All right, let's talk to Mark. Mark. Mark in North Carolina. 
We tried to talk to you earlier. You are our helpful litmus test. Can you hear us now? I can certainly hear you. How are you guys? We are doing good now that everyone can hear everybody else. What can we help you with today? <laughs> well, actually, my, uh, my call and my question was actually what you guys were just talking about. Perfect segue. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. It, it, it is. It, that, 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 that's some good hosting. I love that. That was, that was clean. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, well, my question is, is kind of the flip side. Okay. Um, I, um, I was actually in a uh, kind of an online Bible study group a few months back. Uh, just, you know, just, you know, trying to learn, you know, uh, trying to uh, learn and understand and everything, how, how uh, people thought and how people talked and reacted. But um, uh, just like you were talking about, they kept going on and on, on about, you know, pretty much what makes a true Christian and what doesn't. They mm -hmm. were talking about, you know, hypocrisy in the church and all that good crap. Okay, okay. So, well, so, so much. Just so we can zero in, um, when somebody says they're a true Christian, can we can we just define that a little bit so that people kind of have a context around it? Um, so if somebody's saying, oh, they're not a true Christian, what are they usually referring to? Uh, so, well, the people who say that if somebody else is not a true Christian, what they're generally referring to is that they're not acting and believing the same things that I do. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a doctrinal uh, difference. Uh, you were talking about dispensational, dispensationalism, legalism. Uh, this is a lot of Christianese for a lot of people who, if you want all the rabbit holes, all the rabbit trails, uh, you can go down um, annihilationism uh, and, and then even splitting off even more. Mormons call themselves Christians. Yeah. J-dubs call themselves Christians. And when they say, well, they're not, they're not true Christians because they're not my brand. And exactly. unfortunately, that's not how labels work. Um, you can't get, right. keep those labels like that. It, it, it bites. I know. Yeah. But it's where you get no true uh, so, uh, so my thought process is that I tried to flip this. Mm -hmm. Is that, okay, is there such a thing as a true atheist? Ah. Because during, during, during this during this little Bible study, they said, "Well, I've talked to atheists before, and I've, you know, I, I've convinced them of other things, and they weren't atheists anymore, right?" And you hear these stories online all the time. Uh -huh. I know that people are atheists, and you know they, you know, they're they're a broad spectrum of what they believe and what they don't believe. Um, but there's also, you know, um, th through my own experience, I've realized that there's people who are atheists for. Uh, good reasons, bad reasons, and really bad reasons, right? <laughs> That's yeah. a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I so mean, the you know, uh, 15, 15, 20 years ago, um, I considered myself an atheist, but I didn't really understand, you know, the the reasoning, you know, and logic behind why I considered myself atheist. You know, right? Um, it wasn't until I was in my thirties that I really well. began to learn and read it to explore. You know everything, everything on the why of that. So, is is there such a thing as a real or true atheist, or is this kind of reasoning just as fallacious as when Christians use it? Well, here's the here's the fun part. Um, I would say that you can be a real atheist or a not real atheist much more easily than you can or cannot be a real Christian, because. The definition of an atheist is someone who does not believe in a god or gods. So if you are that, then you are a real atheist. It is a single definition. And if you meet that single criteria, then you are an atheist. If you believe in a god or gods, you are not an atheist. Um, if, you, if you have lapsed and don't feel connected to God, but think God is still around, you're not an atheist. If you are mad at God for doing something mean to you at some point, and so you don't believe in him anymore, you're not an atheist, right? Um, and a lot of Christians tend to use those two interchangeably and say, well, I was an atheist. And what they mean is I didn't love God at one point. Um, but yes, you can absolutely be or not be an atheist. The interesting thing, and this is why we kind of went with this direction for the show, is whether, whether or not you can use that for skeptic. Um, because I think that 
is a much larger conversation that has a lot more to do with that nuance that Christianity brings to the table of, oh, well, there's more to it than just an answer to a single question. It is a worldview. It is a practice. And before we get flooded with messages, I, I, I kind of want to... Oh, did I say something controversial? You, you did. Uh, there are a lot of people who are prescriptivist. Uh -oh about their definition of those oh, words. Oh, they can come the fuck at me. <laughs> the fuck at me. At author of confusion. At author, author confusion, confusion. On Twitter. Um, and just remember that when you email, um, uh, what was it, contact skeptic? Contact skeptic generation at gmail.com. Make sure that in the title you, 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 you say this is for V. <laughs> Um, and have fun <laughs> with that. Mark, thank you for calling in. <laughs> hey, it's great talking to you again, Eric. And uh, hey, you guys are, uh, keep doing what you're doing. I love all your work. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. calling in. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. God. Okay, uh, I do so, want to talk so, to... So we're, 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 we're hitting the... We, we got the vegans. <laughs> and now we're going to get the agnostic atheist debate coming in. Uh, we talked about guns. Uh-huh. We talked um, about pride. And I'm we're going to continue to on our next call, actually. Okay. Well, let's, let's do it. All we need to do to round this out is for me to announce that in October, I'm going to be on a panel for the, um, what's it called? The... Oh, Interfaith? No, it's, yeah. a, it's a World Religions Symposium. Or Summit. Summit, no. It's yeah. a... I forget the name of it. I'll, I'll remember. But I'm going to be speaking on a panel on atheist witchcraft. So there you go. There's there's the trifecta. Yep. Have fun in the comments. All right. At let's author talk, confusion. Let's talk <laughs> with Bree. Bree. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hi. Uh, so you you asked for a call on on talking about kink at pride so absolutely here i am <laughs> perfect can you get their pronouns in there as well yes yes if if people request pronouns then we definitely always want to put them up just in case oh, okay, thank um you. of course Bree. um what are your thoughts talk to us well i actually first noticed this whole discussion i think when you were tweeting about it uh, so I didn't see who originated it or whatever, so this isn't a comment on whoever discarded, started this whole conversation. Uh, but I've noticed that a lot of the people arguing, on Twitter at least, in the no kink at pride side, mm -hmm. uh, tend to have a bit of a history uh, for trans exclusion. Mm. So I'm wondering if it's a case of them not... Uh, like, what are they calling kink? Right. You know? Right. <laughs> what are they wanting to exclude? That is absolutely uh, a good question to ask, because if you ask two people, they're going to tell you different things, and it's going to end up just being anything queer that we don't like or makes us uncomfortable. Bree, you have unleashed V. Yeah. Little bit. Little <laughs> bit. <laughs> no, yeah. I love that you brought this up, because last year... There was a, an, a concerted effort by 4chan users, alt-right trolls essentially, to mm -hmm. attack Pride all through the month of June last year. And I did a little bit of research, Brie, actually, because I also was unsure exactly of where this, um, this originated. And I can't mm -hmm. find the, uh, the origin of this discourse myself either. So I'm going to do a little more digging. And if you find anything, let me know. Um, but I would not be surprised if it was another attempt at just trying to sow discord in a, in a way that is not helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't. And and I mean, also, like, as far as my opinion regarding, you know, so-called kink at pride, I mean, as long as we're not breaking any local city laws regarding, like, I don't know, nudity or public sex, mm -hmm. then they can whine all they want whatever. <laughs> well, and that's another thing as well. Um, there is, the, if, if you want to say kink at pride makes me uncomfortable, 
absolutely, we can have that conversation. Why is that? If I were still on another yeah. show, I probably would deconstruct that quite a bit and have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> there are there yeah. are also people who are on the ace spectrum, right? And might even be sex repulsed who want to participate in pride and kink might make them uncomfortable. So there's a great conversation to be had around how, how to include our asexual friends and companions in pride as well. So there are valid reasons to have this conversation, but the way that it's being conducted on Twitter especially is reductive and very, very suspicious to me. Yeah, and I mean, like, and, and I'm asexual myself, um, so I mean, like, I, I know not all, and of course not all ace people are the same, but I, I actually am comforted by seeing the acceptance for all kinds of different sexualities, which I would hope includes my own. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it, it helps me feel that, you know, everyone is welcome. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's me personally. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love I that. <laughs> I am so happy that you joined the call, Bree. Thank you for calling in. And thank you for making me feel like a real-life Twitter influencer because you heard about this from <laughs> me. <laughs> Yeah, I've been following you since 2018, I think. So. That was when I got on the, the, the bird app. So you are an OG. I'm, I am impressed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, so. thank you so much for calling in. I think we're pretty much on the same page on this. And I love that we got a chance to talk about it a little bit more. Yeah, it's it's been kind of frustrating because part of me was like, I don't know where this came from. Another part of me is like, I don't get what the big deal is. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it does seem to have blown up quite a bit. Um, we're going to yeah. move on to the next caller, but thank you so much for calling in, Bree, and happy Pride. Yep. Thanks. Happy Pride to you guys, too. Happy Pride. Bye. I, so, it's, it, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm not straight, and I'm fine with that. No, I. <laughs> okay, and I, 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 I understand that, and I know that, and I accept that. But for some reason, I still feel like an interloper, and I'm working through it. But mm -hmm. seeing those conversations, I don't. I don't feel like I can speak with authority. I just kind of want to listen and learn. Well, you can and always speak with authority by using I statements. I want to listen and learn. Um, and until that point, um, I feel like I'm, I'm glad that you're having and pushing that conversation forward as I learn more about myself. Aww. And also, just so you know, being confused about whether or not you are an interloper and having that kind of... Uh, like fear is one of the most queer things you can possibly do. <laughs> so thanks. Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's good. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be really, really fun to clip. That is gonna uh, be real fun. Doing doing kink at Pride for a thumbnail. Oh my god. Yes. yes. Okay, let's talk to Meta in Pennsylvania. My metaphor. Meta metaphor. Hello. Oh damn, metaphor. Okay. Hi, metaphor. <laughs> Hello, how are you? We are doing oh. good. How are you? How can we help Hello. you today? Ah, you know, sometimes I sit and I just wonder, what is this? And what do you call the world? Metaphor? I don't <laughs> so know if I, we have time for that. <laughs> so, so, so this was, this was my lead in. Uh, I apologize. Uh -huh. I wanted to have a discussion about deepities. Okay. Um, because Ooh. I think what, sometimes well, they're dismissed, uh, I guess, the, in, the, the nut, the, in a nutshell, where does a deepity begin or end and a poem begin or a metaphor? So, I mean, <laughs> I looked at where they came from and then it was yeah. talking to them mm -hmm. talking well, let's, about let's, theology. Let's specifically identify it. what a deepity is for people who are following because they might not know oh, what a, sure. a deepity is. A deepity was, uh, is a term coined by Daniel Dennett uh, when he was talking about uh, different sayings and phrases that sound very, very... Oh, what's the word? Love finds a way. Love is just a word. Or, or it's not 
the size of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that actually has anyway. Um, but uh, but he, he called them deepities because it, it, it seems very very profound is the word I was looking for. Um, but when you zoom in, actually doesn't mean anything, and so it, it causes people to kind of look at this this string of nonsense and go, oh, if you if you look hard enough. Oh, there's there's just so much to. Oh my gosh, it's so deep. No, no, it's not. It's word salad. Uh, and if you want to see some just beautiful deepities, uh, check out Deepak Chopra uh, or Jordan Peterson or Jordan Peterson. So here's the deal, metaphor. I think that a lot of poetry and a lot of metaphor can also be classified as deepities. I guess the concern that I think Dennett had with them and that I would share is the concern where you are giving us a deepity and nothing else, right? It's not a poem where the author had an intent and is saying something in a flowery way that maybe can be misconstrued or, you know, uh, you know, uh, interpreted in multiple ways. Um, it's just, oh, I don't want to actually answer this question, so I'm going to throw something at you that sounds profound so you stop asking. That's the difference. So it's not necessarily that it bo they both sound flowery, because they do. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to, you know, smoke and mirrors you so <laughs> you don't notice that I don't actually have an answer. Does that make sense? Um, I hear what you're saying. So I, I, in a nutshell, it sounds like you're saying you're, they're kind of using it as a rhetorical weapon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, kind of, it kind of shuts down the conversation. Well, because, because obviously you haven't thought about it enough. If you, if you don't get it, it's because you haven't thought about it enough. Um, it, it's, it's used so often in so many different ways, and that's just another way that it's used. My favorite, and the one that I think struck me on that, was truth. Because as a Christian, you say, I know what truth is. It's given by God. And when you say, okay, well, what is truth? They say it's the evidence of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. And well, I've, I've, the, hold on. What do you think about no. this one? No, 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 sorry. It's, it's evidence of things not seen. It's, it's the, not seen, yeah. no, it's, it's, can you, can, can you, I, my brain just I, slipped it. Yeah, my brain's not, not getting it either. Um, we were never true Christians. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> um, well, you know, I like the live chat, correct better us. Better than passive code. <laughs> I like the, uh, and the thing concept loves, of. It is infinite. Yeah, I like the concept. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry. So if a thing loves, it's infinite. I mean, we can agree upon that. It is infinite. So, the, what I mean, the hell like does William... that mean? No, metaphor. Right. What the hell? If something is loved, it's right. infinite? What the... F Let infinite me... what? No. What right, right. In, what, so that's in, a poem by William Blake. Okay. And a highly regarded, like, line from a poem. I'm sorry. So no, that's okay. I thought you were making that as a statement. I was well, like... Well, I mean, yeah, so... But, I mean, perhaps the person who is using the deepity, perhaps they really haven't formed the idea well, what they want to, you know, and they're, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times in conversations, it's very pointed. We're looking for, what do you mean? What do you mean? I want to know what the truth is on that. But, uh, you know, I guess like what you were saying in the previous call about, um, you know, there being, I, I don't know how else to put it, but people who, you know, there's such a variety of people of faith. So some where it's very compatible with someone who's an atheist and we could go out and talk about stuff and even agree upon a lot of stuff, even though if a thing loves, it's infinite. Anyway, well, never mind. Um, so, <laughs> well, um, thank you for... for yeah, we're going to have to move on. Metaphor, we've got like maybe seven, eight minutes left and we want to make sure we get through the last calls. But um, that was actually a really interesting differentiation, I think, is useful. So thank you for calling in. Yeah, no worries. Nice talking to you. You too. Bye. Right. Um, Who are we talking to next? This gives hold on one sec. This okay. this gave me mad. Um, to, for those of you who have been on Twitter recently, uh, Richard Dawkins is now going after Kafka's Metamorphosis as being a stupid book because it's bad sci-fi or it's unclear metaphor, and how dare Kafka? And I'm just very confused with Dawkins at this point. Also honored to be lumped in with a tr as a trans person with Kafka as things that Dawkins doesn't understand. Um, <laughs> but it's I, I don't know. I think I think there's a larger conversation to be had about where metaphor and figurative language fits into things. Because as skeptics, we're not saying we must only talk in computer code right like there are true it's there it, there is art there is beauty there is literature and they all serve very important purposes but maybe when we're trying to determine things like what is truth 
we need a different foundation than a Bible verse. Well, and, and it's not just that. It's, it's you know, these are category errors. They can be beautiful when viewed, but that doesn't mean that they have anything to do with reality outside of their beauty. Um, love is infinite is a great example. Um, love is not a thing that you, it, 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 it just, it's not, doesn't work that way. What is um, grief but love persevering? Thank you, V. Thank you for that. That was, that was a deepity, but that deepity makes me want to cry every time. All right. I think we have time for one more caller. Okay. Uh, let's talk with Will in Texas. Um, but for everybody else on the line, please call back next week. You both have very interesting questions we would love to talk with you about. And we want to make sure that when we clip these later, we're able to give you a full like 5, 10, 15 minute conversation yes. and not just a couple of minutes. So make sure to call back and we will look for your calls. Will in Texas, welcome to the show. Hi. 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 How can we it's help you today? Amazing. It's amazing to talk to you both. I've been a fan for a long time. Oh, yay. Um, so I know that uh, veganism has been a hot topic. <laughs> My, is this the third show. call? This is well. It's one per episode at this point. Yes, no, no, go no. for it. Okay. So I apologize for uh, muddying the waters there, but I think that um, there's there's a piece of helpful um, data that that I can, or not data, but but an idea that I can uh, provide that that will help others consider another point to this topic. Interesting. And Hit us. What's up? To, to me, it, it starts like this. Um, I assume you are both against animal cruelty. That's. A, I think that's a good assumption. Yeah. I, I think I'm against cruelty in general. Right, cruelty in general. So, uh, obviously, at this point, you'd want to kind of define what cruelty is, mm -hmm. so that um, you know we don't take out things that that aren't um, uh, that make it. Uh, how do I describe this? Um, so, in a nutshell, my view is if one is against animal cruelty and we know that animals other animals do sense danger do flee do run away um how is it that uh, that we can re reconcile literally killing an animal to end so, its life to prevent it from living its best life to have any kind of choice in the matter which we know if it had a choice it would run away from any kind of of impending doom that it could recognize H how can how can you reconcile eating meat and being against animal cruelty. Well, I'm going to dive into the deep end here for a quick second. And I'm sorry that we took you last and we're going to have to wrap this up probably sooner than any of us want to. Which is why you're going to have to call back. Right. Definitely call back. Uh, for me, specifically, when I think of animal cruelty as a category of action, I'm thinking about abuse of an animal for whom you are caretaker or for to whom you have a personal responsibility. So if you go out and you adopt a dog and that dog is now dependent on you and you have entered into this some kind of social contract with this animal and being like, I'm going to provide for you and care for you and house you and feed you, and then you don't, that is animal cruelty. Now, I smash bugs off of me when they land on me. I'm, you know, like that is not a contract that I am breaking, even though, yes, I am killing a bug. It's that to me is the distinction between animal cruelty and other concepts around that. I'm not saying that that is by any means hard and fast, but where my mind goes is, is that contract that you enter into with an animal you decide to care for and then don't. Yeah. I for me, I, I, I jump, I know we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm going to try my best to <laughs> summarize this. Um, so I, I think we're mixing things, and when we mix them, it gets muddied. And so the first is if we were to uh, look up Temple Grandin. Temple Grandin uh, invented a very, very humane way to slaughter cows um, that gets them to from zero to death without suffering or fear or pain. And if you were to factor that in now, is it moral or ethical to kill that animal? At the same time, there are other things like you have that dog your entire life and that dog is now suffering. It is at the end of its life and you decide to put it down. Uh, I would say that that is an act of compassion and yet you are still killing an animal. And because of that, using broad strokes like that, are it, what it does is I feel like it destroys the conversation that needs to be had in the gray area that we need to find ourselves getting to a lot faster. 
I think we'd like to make gray areas on this topic, though, especially the one where we talk about, oh, well, we're humans, we're not animals, when in reality we are. And in my we, eyes, well, I can't so, see well, how it isn't cruel to end a uh, to end the life of another animal just because we want to eat it when okay, we have but what many, if it's many suffering? other options. Well, but what if it's suffering? So the way that yeah. I phrase this is, I, 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 I understand unnecessary I, I, animal suffering. Perfect. Um, let's pick that back up. Uh, but uh, we 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 are out of time. Um, thank you for calling in. Thank you for waiting. Call back early, okay? You're both awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Will. All right. <sighs> Once again, we have to not take all the callers because we had technical issues, and Sorry. that's on us. Um, yes. Thank you so much, everybody who stuck around and stuck with us for those 10, 15 minutes where we were trying to figure out everything. I hope I vamped adequately for y'all. You did wonderful. Um, we are probably going to, yeah, as I said, the next week is the last week that we are going to be in this studio space. So say goodbye to these guys. Say goodbye to this chair. Say goodbye actually. to, I don't have a chair. I we totally forgot. We're, we're borrowing this chair. I'm gonna uh, this chair is like mine. Um, but uh, it just I'm over gonna, time we're realizing we, 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 we don't have like a wireless router. And there so, are like, there, yeah, there are a couple things that we realize we actually need. need uh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but we're, we're working on getting them if you want to help us get there. Um, we do have an Amazon wish list. Um, we also, if you have not already, uh, consider donating to our Patreon. We have behind the scenes with Eric um videos where eric um goes through lighting and audio and all of these small considerations that really make the show as good as it is already it's fun to share a geek out about and it and geek, just the, the biggest geek um so that's exclusive to patrons we also give you guys you guys are stakeholders in this right you guys have um skin in the game i guess and so what we like to do for our patrons is every so often we'll do a post called show us the money and we'll talk a little bit about what we're paying for a specific thing or where the money is going or how much we're making here or there i believe we're up to 11 whole dollars on spreaker in yes AdSense. I, all, all we need is, no, <laughs> is if another we, nine. if we double that then it will pay for itself which is awesome right because we pay 20 dollars to get hosted we've got 11 dollars back until about next year and then it's going to bump up to fit but anyway we're so we give you all the nitty-gritty and because we want to be transparent about this we want you guys to feel included and like you are putting your money towards a worthwhile goal that we are going to be you know using to better the show and to grow bigger and bigger because we have so many good ideas yes we're going to be we're moving into so many other platforms that we don't even have time to talk about it which is horrible but if you want to support us and you don't like like the video right now. Uh, the likes to the number of people who are watching is terrible. Like that video, subscribe, hit the bell, and share this out because we ha there are people who want to know where we are. We would love for them to find that out. So share this out, please. Also, I'm just going to give a little bit of a hint about what we're doing on our next platform, which may or may not be TikTok. <laughs> hint. Google, Google, um, Joel Osteen's Inspiration Cube. Oh, yes. Just, yeah. Go yep. have fun. Um, <laughs> discuss. Just discuss amongst yourselves. For people, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's an old throw. Okay. Um, so, uh, oh, we still don't have an outro for you guys. Oh, no. Um, so, it's going to be up to Eric this time because I botched it last time. Okay. Um until next week, opinions are like assholes. We have them. <laughs>